All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Work Life Harmony. I have a fellow North Carolinian on the show here today. Um, I am thrilled to bring on Katie Wells. I am obsessed with everything that she is doing, and she is on a mission to help us moms out there get in control of all the stuff when it comes to organizing our kids' um, belongings. So Katie, I will let you introduce yourself and then we will get chatting. Hey, Megan. So happy to be here and hang out with you and your listeners today. So yeah, uh, I'm at Katie Wells. I am a former hot mess mom turned declutter expert. So I like to introduce myself that way because so many people go, oh, great for her declutter expert. It's probably always been easy. She must just you know, it must come natural to her. She's probably always been this way because some people kind of are born and bred yeah. that way. Not many, but some. And so, yeah, I went through my own struggles and especially after kids came into the picture seven years ago for me and, uh, you know, struggling with toy mess, baby gear, piles on the counter, paperwork, all the stuff, random piles of junk everywhere. And, uh, over a few years really developed some systems and frameworks that finally just felt really practical to me as a busy working mom with not a ton of time to devote each day or week to the, to decluttering and uh once i really experienced the benefits including less anxiety less depression a lot of mental health benefits and just feeling this ultimate freedom megan is probably the one word if i had to only use one word i just felt so much freedom once i able once i was able to push through a lot of those roadblocks get rid of my stuff and realize that you know, when it comes to stuff, there is no neutrality. It is not passive, which so many of us believe every time we run to Target or bring stuff home from wherever we are. It's like, oh yeah, just at one more bag or one more thing, but gosh, it adds up quick, doesn't it? Oh, and yeah. um, it created, Clutter for me just created this chaotic environment. I couldn't be productive, <laughs> which I know you are so amazing at teaching so many skills with, but if we're covered in clutter and stuff everywhere it completely just swamps our brain and yeah. um, anyway throughout the years it's just been a big blessing to be on the other side of that and teach other women and moms how to successfully declutter i can remember back when i was pregnant years ago and i remember my husband saying to me like hey uh because i will say he is very and he was one from birth like very much everything has a spot he's not now it's funny because I, I consider him a hoarder. He loves him some trinkets, but everything has its place. Um, whereas I growing up was like the hoarder, like shoving things under my bed. Like I couldn't <laughs> throw away anything. Yes. Um, but I remember him saying like, well, just cause we're, you know, starting a family, it doesn't mean like we're going to have plastic toys and stuff in our living room. Right. I remember thinking, uh, I've never been into anyone's home with small children <laughs> where I was thinking, oh my gosh, how is this going to go? Um, and I truly feel like there have been those days, weeks, moments where I take a look back and I'm still, I'm still in the thick of it, even though my daughter's 11 of feeling like I probably waste thousands of hours mm -hmm. of my life picking up crap, the same things over and over and trying to help train my daughter that everything has a spot when we're done, let's put it back. And I feel like I'm on this hamster wheel that's of hell that's like just never gonna end of will I ever get out of this phase so I'd love some for you to share some thoughts ideas strategies on how we can stay like try and stay on top of the clutter without it taking 10 hours a day every day yeah, absolutely. And I can fully relate to that sentiment you had about, you know, family members, it being difficult for them to let go of things. And I want to encourage you and your listeners that it is possible to empower our family members to manage their own stuff, first of all. And um, although here's the thing, we can't expect perfection. I know we just wish that we could tell them one time, your shoes go in the shoe bin when we get home. Oh my they God. Go in your living, they don't go on the living room floor. Your toys get put back in the toy bin. Listen, I still have to tell my kids these things. And I think sometimes if we just maybe lower the expectation a little bit for ourselves and our families and celebrate the wins, because there are times when they put their shoes in the shoe bin, I'm sure that we don't recognize them for and say, hey. I'm not sure it happens. It doesn't, okay. <laughs> it happens in my ad, yeah, there's hope. So, that, you know, and so focusing on the positive, and celebrating that with them, right? Because it's yeah. always so easy to be like, oh, right? Want to nag, lose your patience, lose your cool, 
is yeah. frustrating, right? And so empower consistently and clearly communicating the boundary, the physical boundary, where things go and giving them some super simple um, strategies. So for kids and adults alike, one of my favorite is Ohio, which stands for only handle it once. This has changed my life. I teach my, I've taught my kids this since they were little. And the cool thing is you don't have to follow it hundred percent of the time or be perfect at it for it to help. If you think about the mess that accumulates throughout the day, throughout your home, just this expected mess, like dirty dishes on the sink, mm -hmm. toys out, People towels on the floor, in. right? People uh, yeah. coming in, all these things, right? It starts to build and create this stress and anxiety for a lot of us. But if we're able to use this Ohio, right? If you grab a dish and it needs to go in the dishwasher, immediately putting it in the dishwasher instead of procrastinating and, hand, and I'll handle that later. Things like that, right? It, it limits that mess that builds throughout the day and your kids mm -hmm. can do this. So my, my again, my, my sons are five and seven, no Ohio. <laughs> And sometimes I don't have to say, River, why did you leave your shoes out again? I'll just say, River, Ohio. And like, that's his cue. So it wow. takes the emotion out of it. And gosh, I, I save so that. much mental bandwidth, not, you know, and less triggering. I'm less triggered. Yeah, and that's I, so much nicer than where I go, which is for the love of yes. God, how many more times do I have to tell you? To yes, I get it. Absolutely. And I, don't get me wrong. There are times where internally my body is like, seriously, <laughs> seriously, but right. If we can re reduce some of that uh, negative emotion and just come at it with more of an objective thing, because listen, I, there are times, Megan, I don't put my shoes in the shoe bin and I'm sure <laughs> we're, none of us are perfect. Right. So I think, you know, reminding ourselves of that, like, oh yeah, like if I'm the role model and half the time I'm not putting my shoes in the shoe bin either, well, imagine how difficult it can yeah. be for a young child to, you know, I really love asleep. that Ohio on the only handle at once. And I'm, I'm seeing how it relates to the same thing with information that comes in at us, right? Not just physical stuff. So mm -hmm. like for me, when a thing comes in, I, in the moment, I have to ask myself, does this go into my plan for the week or does this go onto my backlog to be reviewed when I create my plan for next week, instead of let me jot it down on a post-it note, let me write it over here. And then we start to have the clutter of information as well, that in that moment, I make the decision this week or backlog. So then I've, I've handled it and it's done. Yes. But granted, there is a second handling of then actually doing the task, but at least I'm not churning on it for days after days after days, trying to figure so out when. True. And that mental clutter reduces too, right? It's not like, oh, one more thing to do. I'll remember, I'll try and remember this. Yeah. yeah just handling it right away. If you can. Now, any tips on, for people that live in a multi-story house, like I do, Yes, the clutter comes in downstairs, Yeah, but a lot of times the things need to go upstairs. And I'm thinking through the Ohio of the moaning and groaning of, I don't want to walk up the stairs. I totally that get inevitably that. inevitably comes. <laughs> um, I used to do the, we'd like put it on the stair and then the, the intent was you take it and you go up but our dog is a relocator. So we can't leave anything on the stair or she <laughs> will take it and she doesn't destroy it, but she does like to relocate things around the house. So it, it inevitably ends up stacked somewhere. I don't want it. That's then not visual to remember to get it up the stairs. So my, I was going to say my first recommendation, we used to have a basket on the basket, stairs. If yeah. that's not a, well, the, the nice thing about a basket versus just you know, tossing little knickknacks and papers and maybe a pair of shoes and things that are loose is because when you have a basket with a handle, right, you can just scoop your elbow under it, mm. pick it up, right? Yes. It makes it easier to follow through with the habit. And then you can disperse everything on the second level once you get up there, right? Because there's bound to be things. This goes to my daughter's room. This goes to my husband's closet. This goes to my bathroom vanity, <laughs> right? Bringing new yep. shampoo home from the store, right? We don't always want to take it upstairs. <laughs> I do the same thing. I put it on the stairs. Um, I used to have a little basket like I'm talking about. And then it broke and I, and I thought, well, let's just see if, if I can get away with not replacing it. And it's been fine. However, there are days where I'm like, it would have been nice to <laughs> replace that basket. That, yeah. If that's not I hadn't not even an thought option. about maybe something with even a folding lid. A lid, work. a yeah. lid and yeah, something that's just super easy, right? Because when we have to use two hands to take it off, that makes it more difficult right? To follow through. Ultimately that stuff will probably just sit next to the bin, right? Cause mm -hmm. we're like intuitively lazy and busy. <laughs> anyway, 
<laughs> I'll speak for myself here. No, so something you. you can do one handed and toss stuff into. Um, other than that, maybe something counter height, maybe you designate a portion of a table somewhere where your dog can get it or something up high and go listen, family, daughter, husband, this week, I want to test out using this small bin or this basket, anything that needs to go up to the upstairs, put it in here, and we're going to test this out. And I want you to get in the habit of walking past here, scooping it up on your elbow and run it upstairs and bringing it back. Let's try this out for a few weeks and see how it goes. Love that. Now, what about the onslaught of when you have young kids, the onslaught of stuff that you're not even buying, that you're not in charge of, that somehow like all the little gift bags and the things from school and the slinkies and the, the dentist given the 10 million, the bouncy ball that you see where <laughs> yes. that's going. Like what are other, I mean, my strategy to date has not been a good one, which is when my daughter's not at home, I frantically go around, collect it all and throw it away. Yes. And then of course it was the one bouncy ball that she loved and now it I broke her heart. So what are some good strategies to help involve your kids with mm -hmm. all the onslaught of stuff coming in so that we can make good choices on what we keep and what we really don't have to hang on to. One of my best recommendations for this area. And again, it's sometimes we just need to do it right. The kids are at school. We're going to take five, 10 minutes during our day and do a quick judge, like get rid of the superficial clutter, the stuff like they haven't yeah. played with, you know, like the broken the excess, the, you know, the little trinkets yeah. and things. The next thing I would do, if you haven't already done this, no matter what your kids age, even if they're like two, three, four, 11, 14, is establish some type of physical boundary within your home. So if your daughter keeps a lot of her things, the majority of them, let's say maybe in her room, and then maybe she's got a play space too, or a part of the living room where, room where she keeps things, establish physical boundaries that you're willing to use for said stuff, trinkets, toys, homework, knickknacks <laughs> when i was 11 i was really into keychains so my oh my god so was cool. i i you loved like hundred of them on the <laughs> i did too and you know looking back i'm like i'm so grateful my mom didn't squash that you know like i'm very <sighs> sensitive as someone in this niche to not want to squash my kids interest in things right um and so it's like having how do you find that walk that line, right? And so establishing this boundary, so a bin, um, when my kids were really little and had toys, it was a six cube bin. And I would explain to them, this is a space that we have allotted for toys. When this starts to overflow, that's our cue that something needs to go. And so it empowered them versus wow. me not even taking that into consideration and you know, getting triggered, the overwhelm builds and builds and builds. And it's a visual cue to both you and your daughter to go, okay, you know, this is the space I'm allowed to keep my keychains or all this stuff and uh, pay attention and then honor those, those boundaries is a really, is a really big and easy place to start as well. And those boundaries yeah. can change over time. You, you know, maybe she adds a hobby or a sport or something, and then part of her closet's designated for that. And then she outgrows that, right? So we're, we need right. to constantly kind of edit and audit those boundaries and make sure we're sticking to them. You know, that when you mentioned that, that remind me again, I was like full-blown hoarder when I was younger, but my mom would always a lot. And I remember it was on the, I had a dresser with six drawers and it was the lower left-hand drawer. No questions asked. I could say whatever could fit into that yes. drawer, you know, what a beautiful that was thing like, that made me feel, I mean, that thing was jammed in there with God knows what, but at least that, that was a safe place that if I didn't want to get rid of that rubber bouncy ball, I could put it in that drawer. And, and then when it got to where I couldn't shut anymore, then I had to deal with the drawer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and do you remember just being a kid feeling sometimes like you had no control, right? You had to go to school. You were, had to do homework. You did these sports and like you, there's very little control over your day. Like you did this and, and like being able to have your space in your room and some control of that, I think is really powerful and it helps them design and create this supportive environment. Sometimes they don't know how, right? It takes a lot of skills <laughs> in your brain, uh, which develop over time to organize and execute and declutter, but having, yeah, having that one safe spot, like, okay, I know that my favorite artwork can go in here, or I know that when this starts to overflow, mom or dad's going to scan it. We can put it in a book or it'll be on mom's phone if I want to look at it. Right. And just, just feeling uh, calm in that way. Oh, that's so good. Um, I think, you know, when, uh, when the pandemic hit, so many people were leaning into like 
organizing their spaces and getting clutter free and all of that. And I know you've got some amazing resources out there to do it. Um, and if you guys are listening to this episode, when it airs, you've got one of your awesome challenges coming up, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. My, so tell us yeah. about it. So this, this challenge has helped over 7,000 families now, Megan, Gosh, it is so my most popular course. And the reason, um, so I designed it as a challenge. So it's a live challenge. So inside the challenge, I do 10 trainings about 20 minutes each, and I teach this amazing community how to declutter in really sustainable ways so there are so many approaches when it comes to decluttering and a lot of them don't work for people because they're simply not practical so mm -hmm. inside the challenge i give everyone a simple task of the day which helps them take action because that's often the di most difficult part and i just ask for 20 minutes that's it and i give them practical strategies for literally battling that clutter and mindset reframes and these overarching concepts and it's really the combination of those three where people just get these incredible aha moments and get more clutter out in honestly the first three days of the challenge than the last three years of doing it on their own that's a really common thing i hear and the motivation and the community aspect is just incredible and right we're able to lean on a community of people who are in the same spot as us on the same mission and i think that's such a powerful thing because a lot of us don't have this innate motivation to declutter right it's hard to do things on our own in our own home especially if we have shame and guilt and resentment toward us or our family right we get stuck yeah. and paralyzed in that but when you see other people who also struggle with clutter which by the way is a lot of people folks so don't feel alone <laughs> if you feel like oh my gosh my house it's just my my family or my family is so messy no one else deals with this yes <laughs> it's a struggle and um man it's just an incredible like I said, community and you'll get fast results. And it's just, it's awesome. I can't say enough good stuff I'm about it. I'm excited about it. And I'm going to share the link for everyone to sign up in the show notes. So definitely go in. I know I'm going to be checking it out. I feel like I have gotten a pretty good handle on clutter. I mean, we are out of the baby, baby phases of stuff, but it still shocks me yes. sometimes to open up a certain cabinet or go into a certain room and, and all of a sudden it hits me. I'm like, how, like, how did we get here? Yeah. So I love, <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to this. And what I really think is, is one of your superpowers that everyone's going to experience. And I love that you, you brought it up is talking about the mindset behind mm -hmm. it as well, because it is, you know, I see women who beat themselves up for not being able to stay on clutter or not being able to manage their time. Mm -hmm. And they just think it should be this innate thing that we just magically are gifted with. And so I love that you lean into that. And it's very, I know I leave feeling very validated um, when we can see other people, but then it also helps us get more empowered to say, you know what, I can do this because when we understand the why and maybe how we got there it makes it so much easier to to put new stuff in place so i really really appreciate that that you bring that into everything that you do as well yeah thank you it makes it makes the biggest difference right it's yeah. like so many people and this was me too when i was drowning in clutter i thought first of all something's wrong with me and second of all i thought if i just had the right strategy if i just had the right checklist if i just had the right declutter book and right with and the right bin with the right, the right if i just had the right organization <laughs> bin well better go to target and buy some new bins to solve my clutter problem and i think there's so much beauty and empowerment that can come from you know shifting looking for an outward solution and going inside and going you know what what can i do how can i sh shift my mindset to view things a little bit differently and evolve my relationship with stuff and get to the root of my clutter because if we never get to the root of, if, of our clutter, it's always going to be an uphill battle, truly. Yeah, 100%. And I would, this is my theory, it's a complete theory, but from a lot of women that I work with and a lot of conversations I've had, I am seeing similarities of women that are getting on top of the physical clutter are also getting on top of the mental and time clutter mm -hmm, as absolutely. well. And they are so tightly integrated. Um, so for anyone listening, that's feeling like, you know, that I have the love hate relationship with the, the hot mess express mom. Cause I mean, we've all felt that way, but I think we're leaning into it almost being like a, a get out of jail free card 
for, yes. for not trying. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you feel that you're in that space, either physically or, you know, mentally in terms of just information clutter overload, mm -hmm. coming into a challenge, like what you're doing is going to give you results on both sides. And because the everything happening in your brain behind the scenes behind it, it's the same, it's the same issues that we're tackling there. And so I know that's where I know secretly that women are going to have wins in other parts of their life after yes. they go through the physical decluttering challenges. It's so true. Yeah. I hear from people all the time. First of all, they wake up feeling happier. I mean, within days, Megan, it doesn't yeah. take long. And that's the it other doesn't. thing we think, oh, this is going to take forever. We're looking at all the piles. We're looking at the mess. This is going to take me years. You can literally feel better after just 15, 20 minutes of decluttering yep. and lean on those benefits time. I mean, fighting with your partner less because everyone's less stressed out. I hear just all kinds of amazing, unexpected benefits from getting rid of the physical clutter. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. All right. So guys, make sure you sign up for the challenge. And Katie, I, I love watching you on Instagram. Where is the best place for everybody to connect with you? Instagram. I love Instagram too, myself. So Katie Joy Wells, you can find me there. And then Facebook under Maximize Minimalist. And then of course the podcast as well. Great community. Oh, yeah. There. Uh, name, uh, share the name of your podcast. I'll yep. put that link as well. Also the Maximized Minimalist. I love that name. It's wonderful. <laughs> and guys, this is so fun. Katie and I have not met like in person yet but we live on opposite ends of the state here in North Carolina. So I know on my next journey to the mountains, um, I look forward to actually being able to meet you finally. Yes. I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Thanks, Megan.